because I could add a little bit to it too, because we use GIDS and injury was a major, major concern. And if, if GIDS had a D, uh, F type injury on them, that we made sure that those guys, when they came in for physicals, if we did bring them in, got through the, uh, physical, very detailed and not just a, a glance over from what we got from other teams. And it really helped us avoid paying money and the resources are limited as it is uh, when you're up against the cap, uh, but paying for a player and not having him available. And that just, uh, that just gives you such a competitive disadvantage. You, know, you look at this and, you know, sitting in the seat for a while, like it seems so obvious not to sign injured players. Um, and the amount of savings is obviously compelling, but it's hard sometimes when your options are so limited and you're trying to fill needs and you're, you know, your resources are so scarce. It all seriousness, like gives like of all the things you do, like I do find that to be remarkable, like how accurate you're every year. Like, and I give you credit because you do first guess and not second guess. And it's just amazing how precisely accurate you are in this area. So today we are talking about the injury grades. I guess when Pro Scouts started 45 years ago, we always had an injury grade and it basically started like it's a school report card. And you come into the league uh, as a C injury grade. And if you play 16 games uh, and don't miss any games via injury or suspension for two years, you go to B. Three years in a row of not missing games, you go to A. If you miss one game we in a season, we take you to C minus. Uh, two games or more in a season, we take you to D. Two games or more for two years in a row, D minus. And three, two games or more for three straight seasons, you go to F. Obviously, if you have a healthy season, uh, you can go from D to C, D minus to C, so on and so forth. Three years in a row of when you hit F injury, it, it, it's pretty astounding that there are very few players uh, that ever play 16 games and or produce at that starter high level of a blue color or a red color. So kind of the chart in front of you right now, you'll see the last five years, there's been close to a half billion dollars spent on F injury unrestricted free agents who didn't play blue or red the next year. Um, and of the, the 13 uh, that have played blue or red the next year, or I mean, 13 of the 15, 87%, uh, they were former blues. So in reality, if you're an F injury unrestricted free agent and or an F injury player on a roster who's never had a blue or red season, it would be a huge red flag. And it, it's kind of a, the injury grade is kind of the a, a warning of be careful of not having too many D, D minus F injuries on your roster. Uh, an example last year would have been, say, the Baltimore corner position that going into training camp, except for Humphrey, every veteran on a uh, corner for Baltimore was either F, D, or D minus. And as we know, they got they got bombarded with with injuries and and and, you know, lost their last six games. So it's just another kind of warning sign um, that if you're F and you've never produced at a very high level, I would avoid signing and or paying um, F injury UFs. You know, examples in the past, Will Fuller last year when he went to Miami, F injury UF, got $10 million. Uh, Jason Brett played one game before he got hurt again, $5.2 million. It, 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 you know, it, it, we come in kind of as the actuary warning sign of, of be careful who you pay and, and F injuries players um, is kind of like our number one red flag to avoid. Spoke with Bill Poling earlier in the week and it has to be an example. And his example was, well, if we saw F injury, we just took him off the board and, and we knew not to mess your, the studies uh, that we roll over every five years show that, that um, you know, it's proven correct. It'll be interesting because you look at the halfback position and it's 0% odds. 
well, that in count that counts this year for next year. You know, Penny at Seattle, uh, Connor at Arizona, who were paid pretty good money. Uh, Carson the year before at Seattle was F injury and didn't defy. So in the last two years, Seattle has paid the halfback position over 10 million and, and Carson didn't defy last year. We'll see this year with Penny and we'll see this year with, with Connor at Arizona. Um, and both those teams, I think are count on those guys having productive years. And I'd say it, it, it's very slim that that's going to happen. It seems so obvious not to sign injured players. Um, and the amount of savings is obviously compelling, but it's hard sometimes when your options are so limited and you're trying to fill needs and your, you know, your resources are so scarce. Um, Baltimore has been a great organization for a long time and uh, they've made a lot more right decisions than wrong, but you know, every year, you know, you, you, you tell me like all these guys are going to get hurt and then they get hurt, you know, like it seems so fundamental, but I guess my question would be is how would you, if you were saying with the Ravens a year ago, you know, it was clear like which players you would have said don't sign, but what, what would your suggestions have been in the alternative? It's, it's, you know, on certain players, it's probably, you know, one of the axioms don't back up an F injury or D minus injury player with another F injury or D minus injury in 2012 coming out of, of the strike. And, and remember Philly was being called the dream team. And somebody questioned, goes, hey, what do you think? Is this a dream team? And I'd go, I'd be really worried at, at tackle because both starting tackles were F injury and, and the backup was also F injury. And none of them, and I can remember there was a picture of them in the late August in street, street clothes. They still had practice. And the three tackles never got on the field that year. So if you're going to, if you have an F injury player, number one, he has to be a former blue and we better make sure his backup is, is, is a clean health guy. So we don't just keep spinning our tires in the mud. Availability is the best ability. That's what, that's what I would say is if you have an F injury or D minus player who has skill and talent, make sure his backups are, are B or A injury.